Hello everyone, welcome to the review of Chapter 3, Network Protocols and Communications. Today, we're going to be talking about network protocols and standards that govern communication and the way data is transported across the network. Network communication has been growing because more and more people communicate online from everywhere, which requires more infrastructure and services to take advantage of the network. The network industry as a whole has adopted a developmental framework that allows designers to understand current network platforms and maintain them. Network communications work on the same principle as human communication, where they have the basic elements such as source, destination, message, and the channel. There are three message delivery options, unicast, multicast, and broadcast. In the multicast mode, one person can communicate to another person, one-on-one -on -one communication. In the case of network communication, it would refer to one device to another, like a computer to another computer or a computer to a printer, for example. Another method is multicast. This occurs when one person gives a message to a few selected members from a group of people but not all of the people that are available. The same thing happens in the network communication. Only one device communicates to a whole group of devices, but not all of them. And they communicate to in order to do specific instructions. Well, on the other hand, broadcast communication occurs when one person talks to everyone available as well as one device communicate to all the devices in the network. Now a world without rules is chaos. So now we're going to talk about the rules that govern communications, referring to protocols. A protocol is a form or agreement that enables effective communication. So a communication protocol allows us to see how the message is structured the process by which the devices share information and how errors and system messages are passed between devices. Now, a protocol suite is a group of interrelated protocols necessary to perform a communication function. Long ago, network developers used their own protocols with their own ideas so networks weren't compatible. So to understand how communication works, we need to review the benefits of using a layered model which provides a way to break a complex task into parts that describe how they work. One of them is the OSI, which refers to Open System Interconnection, which is, defined, which is a defined network communication in seven layers application layer, presentation layer, session, transportation, network, data, and physical layers. When we talk to application layers, the application layer provides the mean for end-to-end to -end connectivity between individuals in the human network using data networks. It offers applications the possibility to access the servers of the next layers. It also defines the protocols that are used in the applications to interchange da data, like sending emails, for example. The user doesn't interact directly with the level of application, but with programs that do interact with the level of application in order to make it simple and doable. Now we're going to talk about the presentation layer, which is responsible of the representation of the information so that different devices could have different internal representations so that devices easily recognize data. Data can be coded and compressed in this layer, acting like a translator. Then we have the session layer. The session layer provides services to the presentation layer to organize its dialogue and to manage data exchange maintains con and controls a link between two computers that are transmitting data. 
Then we have the transport layer. This layer transfers data sequences from the source to a destination host by breaking the data into little pieces or segmentation. Then we have the network layer. This layer identifies the best routes for the data to travel more efficient. Because the main responsibility of this layer is to make the data travel from the origin to destination. Routers and firewall work in this layer. Then we have the link data link layer, which provides a reliable link between two directly connected nodes by detecting and correcting errors that may occur in the physical layer. In these layers we can find the physical directions placed permanently in a chip known as, as media access control Mac, which controls how computers gain access to data and permission to transmit it. Then we have the physical layer. All the physical elements that make a network possible are defined in this layer, such as physical transmission medium, cables, adapters, etc. Then we're going to talk about the TCP IP model which is a simplified model of the OSI which has only four layers as you can see here which is the application layer, the transportation layer, the internal layer and the network access layer. But it's basically the same thing where the first layer, application layer, encloses the application, the presentation and the session layer from the OSI model. While the transportation layer remains the same, as well as the network layer will do the function of the internal layer and vice versa. But the network access layer right here encloses the data link layer and the physical layer from the last model. Now we're going to talk about encapsulation. What is a PDU? The form that a piece of data takes at, at, at any layer is a protocol data unit. During, its, during encapsulation, XUCN layer encapsulates the PDU that it receives from the layer above. In the, as you can see here, in the first three layers, the application layer, the presentation layer and the session layer, from the OSI model or the application layer from the TCP model, the information is considered and known as data. After that, in the transport layer, the data, as I said before, breaks into little pieces or segments in order to travel. So while the segment travels, the encapsulation process adds additional protocol header information to the data before transmission. When sending messages on a network, the protocol stack on a host operates from the top to bottom. In the web server example, we can use the TCP IP model to illustrate, as you can see in the picture, the process of sending an HTML web page to a client. The application layer protocol HTTP begins the process by delivering the HTML formatted web page data into the transported layer. There the application data is broken into TCP segments. Each TCP segment is given a label called a header containing information about which process running on the destination computer should receive the message. It also contains the information that enables the destination process to reassemble the data back to its original form. Then the transport layer encapsulates the web page HTML data within the segment and sends it to the internet layer where the IP protocol is implemented. Here, the entire TCP segment is encapsulated within an IP packet which adds another label called the IP header. 
The IP header contains source and destination host IP addresses, as well as information necessary to deliver the package to its corresponding destination process. Next, the IP packet is sent to the network access layer, where it is encapsulated within a frame header and trailer. Each frame header contains a source and a destination physical address. The physical address identifies the devices on the local network. The trailer contains error checking information. Finally, the bits are encoded onto the media by the server network interface card. Thanks for watching.